Todd, you're on camera. Do I have to listen to this shit this long? Hey, do I have to listen to this shit all the way through? Hello? Yeah, but I was trying to ask you if I have to listen to this shit all the way through or not. Huh? I can't even hear the lyrics. I can just hear the music and I'm just listening to the same tune over and over. Okay, you're on the air. I turned on the camera while you were playing that. That was your introduction. You just introduced yourself with that. Uh, yeah. If you think it'll make your introduction have a bigger impact. You know what time it is? Todd, do you know what time it is? Do you know what time it is after the hour? Can you stop playing that now? <laughs> Can you stop playing that song now? Thank you. Okay, that's enough. Thank you. That was beautiful. When I put this on your wall, you better listen to it all the way to that part, too since you just put me through that torture. Hey, what time is it after the hour? We're, I, I turned the camera on, so we're at the bus stop and you're on the air. You're putting me on the spot again. Well, you just, played your, you just played your intro music. I had to turn the camera on. Yeah. I didn't know I was gonna turn on. I didn't know you were gonna get your intro music out. I think it was going pretty good with the Canaanites last night. That was a good song about chemtrails. Yeah, except I couldn't hear a single word. All I could hear was the music repeating the same tune over and over. Uh, we'll see how it sounds. It might it might be more clear on the microphone than what I could hear. So. Chemtrails. Yeah. The twelfth days of chemtrails. Do you know what? Do you know what time it is after the hour? These buses come at twenty and fifty after the hour. Oh, there's the time. Oh, I have to wait twenty minutes for the bus. Okay, well, we got about 20 minutes to kill here. Yeah, I'm on the spot too. I'm I'm trying to keep the trying to keep it interesting. I over I overheard someone at the church dinner talking about that Aspen is somehow a strategic is in a strategic uh, position with its location. <coughs> we can hear about Mozart. Mozart? Mozart? Mozart was impressed by the official intentions of the Illuminati. He did 
not know any more details. He had no idea what his influential friends really intended. There's no clear information about whether Mozart even knew that his friends were members of the subversive Illuminati. They only revealed their membership to those whom they might be able to recruit. Uh-oh. And White House had thought, to some of these Freemasons, we shall not even reveal that we have anything more than what a Freemason has. All those who are not suitable for the work shall remain in the Masonic Lodge. This sounds and pretty controversial. <laughs> the additional system. In December 1785, the Illuminati's activities in Vienna were prohibited. The Illuminati were forced to leave their lodges. Despite the ban, they continued to act as ordinary Freemasons. They went up over to the Crown Hope. The Illuminati Ignaz, Hornborn, Joseph von Seinfeld, and Otto von Gilligan Joseph Seinfeld? found a new lodge, the Truth, the Grand Master of which was born. The Illuminati believe that they preached the Illuminati Truth. On 14 January 1786, Mozart joined the new lodge, the Crown Hope. But he was not present at the opening ceremony. There's a Twitter account called the Illuminati. During this period, Mozart seldom wrote Masonic music. Mozart belonged to the society where the Illuminati still dominated. Only during the last year of his life, 1791, did he produce new pieces of music for the Freemasons. This music contained secret codes and moods. Mozart desired true friends. This was why he became a Freemason. All his friends were Freemasons. As a very sociable person, Mozart could not be alone and therefore needed friends to associate with him. It has been observed that Mozart, due to his membership in Masonic lodges, found it easier to succeed and to make a name for himself in Europe. Since high-ranking Masonic brothers supported him, nearly half of the members to the... That's kind of like Frank Sinatra with the Mafia. Mozart. For example, Mr. Hazi, Mozart's publishers were also Freemasons. Berlingame. Berlingame is just coming by. There goes the Berlingame bus. On the brotherly hospitality of the Freemasons. And during his sojourns above, abroad, he always received economic support for free lodging. During his travels from 1787 to 1791, <laughs> what is this? In other places, how Mozart various ways. A crucial role in aiding Mozart financially. The Count Wignowski and Franz Hoffmo and Michael Buckberg were among his most important creditors. Mozart creditors? and his turn helped other Freemasons by acquiring loans for them. In 1787, Mozart was appointed the Imperial Chamber <coughs> requisition for great operas. The Illuminati has become a state within the state. Despite all the prohibitions that they came with this illicit activities against society, the best known people lack experience and resources to protect themselves against Freemasonry, which was under the influence of the Illuminati. The prominent Austrian composer, Franz Schubert, was not a Freemason, and he died... Schubert! Schubert! He died poor and unappreciated. Schubert. was not a Freemason. As a gifted man, Mozart finally managed to see through the Illuminati's, Illuminati's evil. Despite the fact that it appeared to be an angel of light, he intended to protect society by founding a secret society with... What are you reading out of? Dyke Bronx, the cave. Mozart was well aware of the deadly risk he was taking. Already in April... 14, oh, he's kind of like Tupac. Is he kind of like Tupac? Mozart was kind of like Tupac when he, he put himself in danger by talking about the Illuminati. I'm reading a book called Under the Sign of the Scorpion. Oh, okay. About okay. the Illuminati. Who's the author? Yuri, J-U-R-I Lena. Yuri Lena. Oh, okay. That's a this good book. book. This book provides stunning information about the secret role of the Freemasons in international politics. About the bloody upheaval of France in 1789 and the rest of it in 1970. Isn't that special? The high-ranking Freemasons 
Lenin and Trotsky obeyed the Masonic International Council. The author pursues the history of the communist idea from the 18th century Illuminati up to Moses. And that was that special. Karl Marx and Frederick Engels. Oh, there's yeah, the Karl Marx link. Russian revolutions in 1917. That was bullshit. The, the events in Russia between 1917 and 1991 still affect the fate of the world. They often try to answer questions like, Where I love Story Hour. How was it developed? Story like, Hour is so special these financial days. Financial Russian revolutionaries. Blah, blah, is this like, is this like, uh, bedtime stories for conspiracy theorists or what? Look, this is a good part. Mozart, he wished, he wished to expose the magic and the conspiracy of the Freemasons. Oh, I thought that was the best. For this purpose, he intended to use his opera, the Zauber Flute, the Magic Flute, where Sarasso's prototype was the Grand Master of the Freemasons. Ignaz von Born, Mozart had a perfect memory. That perfect memory always comes up in Illuminati related things. The plays in 1791 contained many revelations about the secrets of Freemasonry. He He's probably a mind control slave. The temple and other secret symbols. These metaphors were later removed. Most likely as musical means of expression by. Kind of musical. There's no lyrics, so I don't know how anything can be revealed. Contrasting lyrical and technical themes, elegance and folklore, fantastic details, and salt in the solid atmosphere of the orchestra. What's that sacred Rosicrucian art we all hear about? Of 1791. Is that sacred so Rosicrucian art? For this. And then it goes on to saying about how the uh, Freemasons killed most art. Freemasons killed Mozart and they killed Tupac. Yeah. And they built Lady Gaga. They killed him for the magic flute. Tried to expose the Illuminati with it. Twilight? I don't think they really had to do that. I don't think anybody can understand an opera anyway. They don't, I, <laughs> I don't know. Too many sacred themes in there. Uh huh? Too many sacred oh, Illuminati think, themes. Uh, yeah, yeah, I have it. That's kind of like Pirates of the Caribbean or something. The East India Trading Company. <laughs> Come on, just sound like we know what we're talking about. We're on a. <laughs> Is this rehearsal for the XM radio show we were going to do? Doing that, we should have done that like a year ago or something. Well, it turned out that there's only limited number of stations, and it's really hard to get one. Wow. You could do oh. you can do like blog talk radio or something, but XM radio is a bit exclusive. You gotta be as cool as Howard Stern to get on there. I don't think we're as cool as Howard Stern yet. Might be getting there though. Okay.